So I figured since I was doing the the Mac valve and the uh, boost control for the Mega Squirt, why not make a how-to? Because I mean, that's what YouTube's for is how-to videos, right? So uh, with that said, I figured I'd do it and you guys can follow along. How does it work? I will show you how it works. So you got this in your Tudor Studio. What you do is go to the boost, right now. No, and you click that and then boost settings and uh, basically it says uh, boost control pin that's the where it's getting the information from the uh, computer where it's sending the signal to basically to control it uh, and then it's got a drop down menu now you might be able to dig through this and find you know one that's already hooked up and uh, not being used but the one that's boost, boost, where'd it go? Where'd boost go? Boost was uh, not hooked up and was not on the loom. So I grabbed the loom and I looked and it was not. So what you do then is you go over to uh, the manual for the gold box and check. So I thought I saw this before. I thought I saw something that said boost. But, uh, whoa, that was scrolling super fast. That's all right. Going too fast, I zoom right by it. I think I did. Yeah. So, right at the beginning of this manual is the drop downs. So, uh, the. It's basically got the pen out. And there's two, obviously, on the back of the computer, just like this picture up here. You got a black one and a gray one, and they're each like, I don't know, 32 pin or something like that. But, uh, and it shows you, you can look here on the picture and see what they all are. And it also has a menu, which is super nice. I already went inside and looked at this and uh, looked at it, and it said, it said boost. And I was like, all right. But it says, also says not installed, which is not that big of a deal. It just means we have to install that guy. Uh, so that made me go dig through. Let me zoom out. Wrong out. Zoom through uh, my wiring harness. Now, when you buy the stuff off the EFI Live, they give you like these pre-done little deals, and they've already got the fancy little connectors on them for the pinouts, which is nice because if you don't have the right tool, doing these guys guys are kind of hard to do. And I just searched, and certainly I found a uh, wait, a 22. I found a orange and red one which is meow, that says boost on it. Let's see, can you guys see it? The boost, can you see the boost? I don't know if you can or not, but trust me, it says boost right there. So uh, the last bit of that puzzle then is just installing it in the pin. So we just need to know what pin 22 is of the black connector. So the black plug's there and 22 is over of meow. So we start one and just work our way over. Uh, and they even have, if you scroll down a little bit, there's a little, this, this guy is in there, but there's a nice little, uh, how to on the amp sill connector guy. So don't need that. There we go. And it just basically tells you how to, um, take this guy out and install the pins to make sure that they're seated properly. And you do need to follow these instructions because it's, I, I, I don't think you can do it without, number one, and it won't seat properly if you don't. So follow these instructions. And uh, so that's the back you up. Oh. So that is the gist of doing the install. Basically, uh, the Mac valve is here, and I got this off of the eBay. And it's got three ports. Uh, one, two, and three, and basically, this one just fits the atmosphere. They gave us a nice little popper filter guy there. Put the barbs on here. One side of this goes to uh, 12 volt switched, and the other side will go to the boost, the boost wire, and then we'll set up the table in uh, in Tuner Studio to control this guy. So, um, so what I have done.
is the way this is set up this guy this guy i have like a super light spring in here like three maybe four pounds somewhere in there um so this guy the way the exhaust comes through here at it it, it pushes this open at about five or six maybe max uh um but what we're gonna do is we're we're gonna get rid of the boost controller because we don't need it in here. We're just gonna run a single line to here, and we are going to run the same pressure to the Mac valve, which is gonna go here. And while that is going to go into the bottom port to lift the valve up, the computer is gonna divert some of that pressure and put it on top of the spring pressure. So depending on what the duty cycle is, how much of that pressure we let past the Mac valve, it will basically apply more and more pressure. Uh, and I don't know if it's more duty cycle or less duty cycle, so we'll figure it out. Uh, but but uh, Matt Happel did a whole video on this wastegate thing. It's brilliant. It's, it's uh, very in-depth in probably like 30 minutes. So go over to Sloppy Mechanics and watch Matt's... Uh, uh, video on wastegates if you're wondering all the gajillion ways you can control boost uh, but that's what we're going to do is we're just going to use the pressure we got in the system and the Mac valve and control the back valve digitally so this is all good to go minus the uh, Mac valve being hooked up uh, what I need to do is I need that ground to be ran out to the Mac valve the this little lug right there that's switched on power so I probably should do something to cover it so it doesn't short out and kill anybody or hurt anyone but uh, that's what it is it's just a simple source for switched on power just like that one over there is just a constant power on and then the one drilled right through the, the car is the the ground so um, yeah so we just need to run those two wires uh, and we're gonna do that we are you the finger what we're gonna do is dive into the car pull out the amp sill thingy and repin it with the one we need so we can run that one okay I remember struggling with this last time uh, just because the directions are kind of funky so this is called the red the red the red wedge lock and let's see. And it has to be moved forward for us to uh, manipulate it. Damn it. So it has some kind of a clamping effect that once it's once it's pushed back, you can't push the pins forward. Now, what you'll get is it'll tell you to stick it, and it just basically shows the picture of the screwdriver here. What you want to do is use a relatively wide screwdriver. So this guy is a you know, pretty big pretty big tip and uh, just put it in between the connector and the red part so this red part you'll see it at four corners just pick a corner and just push forward and it'll pop push forward and it'll pop and that that's in the open position so now it's 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 slid forward and now we'll keep reading what else we got All right, on the table, guys, the, uh, the plugs, it's going to show, and it's going to show it all crazy. But anyway, pay close attention. The easiest way to figure this out is the top row is sequential from left to right. So it's 1 through 12 on the top, and the next row you drop down is 13 through 23, I think. Uh, it's just the way they have it labeled makes it look kind of like... Um, to me, it looked like it was supposed to use the third from the top, which I'm not. And luckily, that was already in use, <laughs> so, so I didn't just shove it in there. Um, but, yeah, so that's out. Pick this. It's going to go. God, wait. Let's keep going back. And stick it in there. There it was. I felt the click and then just pop in the red thing and then just check. I mean, you can basically go across the top and see. And yes. Two, three, yep. 
So we have our pin in this little happy place right now. And then now all we gotta do is run this wire, this wire right now, to uh, the negative side of our, or any side, it doesn't really matter, they're both the same. Uh, but this is gonna have to go to one side of the Mac valve. So I'm just gonna, but in the meantime, what we can do is just plug our box back in because it is all good to go. And I so I think that what I'm going to do is just mount the controller and then run the wires back from there. That seems like the smartest way to do it. I don't usually do things the smartest way. <laughs> so uh, it goes meow. And I just checked it. You can use those uh, Milwaukee M12 batteries or 12 volts. So you can just shove it down. And basically in the resting position, this guy puts air out here and in the on position it puts it out now so that's what we're going to do there we go all right now we just need wires we just need walls that's eventually going to cut a hole in it i'm sure whatever yeah, I, 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 it, when you record video, you tend to get a little lost. And uh, so basically, there's only two wires. One has to go to power, switched on, you know, switched on 12-volt power. Uh, you see in my hood, I just have the lug there. It works great for running switched on stuff for sensors and whatnot. Um, and the other side will go to that pin that you installed on the ECU that we showed you earlier. Uh, and then it, 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 that's pretty much it. So I just uh, cut all the film of me installing it. It was pretty boring, and uh, you can figure that out. Just one side to switch power, one side to the ECU, and uh, then hook it to the top of your um, wastegate. Bam, you're done. So uh, also this is the last video I made without my uh, fancy new microphone. So I apologize for the audio quality. Hopefully it'll be better in the future. Okay, so our Mac valve boost controller is all wired up and plumbed. So uh, I, I think that I was saying that it might not make a difference what side you put this on, but it does. So uh, the side you can't blow through is number one, and that's the side you want it the pressure coming from the turbo and then the wastegate the other side and that way when this goes up it'll give it a room for the pressure in here to vent as this is open normally open and uh, when it activates then it's going to divert the pressure from here out through here so that is the proper way so it does matter one two and then three to the air and one side hot one side two Pin 22, pin 22 on the black connector of your ECU in the gold box and probably other stuff, probably other mega squirt stuff too. But uh, so I got the computer and now the last little part of it, I did want to cover. Okay, so the last thing you got to do is go to our, you're going to go to your tuner studio and you're going to go up to boost. And you're going to go boost control settings. And it needs to be boost control on. And then I'm just going to leave all the default stuff where it is. It's going to be an open loop because I don't have any. Uh, I suppose you can use a map, the map uh, sensor to be a closed loop. But I don't know. I think I'm just going to leave it an open loop. And that's going to run us off of a table for that. Now what I will say is figure out what you want your boost cut to be at so I would probably drop this down pretty low to begin with maybe uh, whatever your high you know intentions are so say if you want to run 10 pounds figure out the KPAs for uh, 10 pounds of boost I think I think right now I have it at like 15 pounds basically around 15 pounds um, because I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> and I don't believe there's a real good way to know 100% how everything is going to react. So um, here is your boost table. Uh, on this side is throttle position, uh, and on this side is on this side is RPM. And what you can do is 
you're telling it what the duty cycle is. So at X amount of throttle position, you can do whatever. Um, I think I'm just going to start with uh, maybe 5%, 10%, 5%, doesn't really matter. And, uh, and just sneak into it. So I'm going to load this into the computer and, uh, and go give it a run. There's uh, a bunch of different ways that you can configure um, boost control and there's a bunch of different ways you can, you can ramp in uh, the boost or you can control the boost. Uh, and you can dig in those yourself, but as far as like basics go, basics 101, I have uh, a mega squirt gold box and I want to wire in a boost controller. That's it. That's the simple steps. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time, this is Mike the Monkey Fab signing out.